In the name of Almighty Allah, who is most beneficent and merciful to us, it's a matter of certainly great honor for me as the confidence reposed to me by my brother, Mr. Shreya Nasser, who is like a mentor for me. As far as today's topic, domino laws, challenges and solutions and the concept of killing disorders under probation laws are concerned, it is itself having some inbuilt wording, a new dimension. So I am skipping over from the routine topic and the presentation which was assigned to me the segregation pertaining to juvenile offenders. Since we are leading towards summing up the whole this scenario and there is a need of a wake up call to my younger friends, I would refer here a very horizontal and terrible incident you all people have heard which took place in our neighbor country India on 16th of December 2012. What happened when a student of medical student doing internship in physiotherapy, 23 year old girl, went to watch a movie at a distance of 15 kilometers from her home, Delhi, along with her boyfriend. So when she was returning back along with him, and they were waiting for some transport like auto rickshaw or taxi. But eventually a bus reached there of a very prominent company of the daily transport, public transport. They both boarded on the scene. And the boy Ram Singh, a 17 and a half year old at the time of occurrence, called her DD. She was reluctant. Her boyfriend was also reluctant. So they sensed like something. They felt something. There is a possibility of foul play. Because the passengers in the bus are, can't be seen, but they were a few in numbers. So they were frightened, they were fearful. So ultimately, on the insistence of that boy, and it took about 20, 30 years. But what happened? Besides that, Jovina who was 17 and a half years old. There were five others, conductor, driver and so on. They were all six in numbers. It was 9 p.m. The bus was moving on the roads of Delhi, which is the capital of India. And she was raped in a very gruesome and brutal manner. And not only was raped, she was her, you know, a rod was inserted and she was molested badly because she resisted. The boy was also brutally tortured. And after this gory incident which took place in the bus for one and a half hours, they were abandoned, they were thrown in a lurch in some underpass. There another very unfortunate situation which was faced and confronted by those victims when they try to stop the people for rescue, for taking the girl to the hospital, almost 45-40 minutes passed. Ultimately, one boy on a motorbike, he realized, and then he reported the matter to the petroleum police, and she was taken to a hospital. And because of profuse bleeding and these the injuries sustained by her in the bus, although she remained under treatment at Delhi for 15 days, but ultimately, with the intervention of the government, she was taken to Elizabeth Hospital, the Little Hospital of Singapore, but she couldn't survive. Anyhow, the offenders were arrested. That juvenile was one of the offenders. And it is stunning to note, maybe people are aware, all our lawyers, judges, 
education officers, prosecutors sitting around. What happened? Three years punishment has been provided under the Juvenile Protection Law of the India. Notwithstanding the gravity of the offence. So, and anyhow, after this incident, heated debate started all around India by human rights associations, women for the protection of rights of the but there were four at this. And it was said that a bad incident cannot replace the whole law. And when matter went up to the High Court and Apex Court of India, but the law was not changed. The Honorable Supreme Court of India ruled that the, if he is a, it is provided in the statutory law, and that has been in both for since earlier for since, since 1986 and 2000 of the same year as in fact. So if, if when I came to know about so you know internet and you know media and knowledge gaining knowledge, a lot many sources are available nowadays, YouTube, meditation, much can be said about that. But what I believe this is the country where 70 percent population has been living in rural areas. Yet there are you know big landlords, big perpetrators, big swindlers, the cats, robbers. People can't raise their voice. Once happened, I just share with you when I was a practicing lawyer 12 years back, I was conducting a case. I think I dealt some other cases, but in that bail position, that was a post of bail to bail of some 17, 18 years, and the allegation was that of committing sin. There, you know, servant, he was weeping, he came, said, Sir, Mary Gal Sunso, Sriki, Mary Gal Sunso, a jinda hold to some mudaiya no mustaki salu. Plead the way back in Zaman and Nathi, a very brother, I showed up. In a sort of a Sarah Sardar and a Sardar, now same language. It is a Sarah Sardar and a man and a guilty figure. Terminal and Jay, but he is a Jati. They can get for us a good food of the house. So that can be an American. I am talking of fifteen years back. This is what happening in our society. So, question arises. First of all, I appreciate the initiative taken by Mr. Swaminathan. This is a new thing for me. I have been judged for last two years, the second session, there, serving as the the center. And it was said that this is the remotest district. I would say this district has taken the lead, not only in practical sense, but alphabetically attacking that the first, number first. Wherever you go, you visit any website of the government of Punjab, of Pakistan, out of 36, this is only Punjab. Attack is always at number first. And I do love attack because my last post in posting as a recent messenger was at attack. Although for three, four months, and in 2014 I was promoted. If you don't feel boredom, I can share some other things as well. If prosecutors are sitting here, some prosecutors are sitting, sitting here, there is a boy, he is a prosecutor, I would say boy, Adam Fuss, in United States of America. Maybe you know he is 32, 33 years old, but when he delivered this speech on that talk, he was 29. He said, when he started his speech, he said, when I did law, I wanted to make money like Bukhari sir, like many other lawyers. <laughs> so it is a profession, self employment. But then I realized there are other modes to serve. I opted the career of prosecutor. He then, you know, narrated this incident. He said, once I was carrying, having burger in a market, although it is not compatible with the public servant. I was a little shy. 
Then somebody called, Sir, Sir, Sir! I looked back. The young boy, I tried to recall my memory. Who is he? Then he came closer to me. He said, Sir, I'm Christopher. I said, Oh, yes. Then I started my career as a prosecutor and I was going through the file. Just for all my process, my submission of the IPCA report under section 173, he was at that time just 18 years, less than 18 years boy. That Christopher, because of his domestic conditions, impoverishment, poverty, bad conditions, he had to leave school. And thereafter, he was in charge for stealing 30 laptops and then selling those laptops on internet from a shop. He stole 30 laptops and then sold it. So it was a serious felony, serious crime, serious offense. And couldn't tell the serious punishment. He said, what I did? That was the moment when I said, here, my inner guide me and lead me how to reform. He resorted toward restitution. If the complainant party, or who is the, the shopkeeper whose laptops have been stolen, if given the amount, and because due to some compelling reasons he committed the offense, he was in need of money, he was unable to continue with his studies, what happened? Then he Ultimately, what happened? 75% of those laptops, the amount through donation, through philanthropist, he collected and went for restitution. Unta konchai. Unki krimas ho gai. Kuch ne kya kya chale sir koi baat nahi. Chhod de de. Kehta ho, wo phir chala ja raha tha. Khatam ho gaya. But bachat ho gai. And then, when he seven years later on, he came across the moment which I have described. He said, I am manager in the bank. I did DBA, did MBA. So this is the actual restoration. The son I got a lot of money. You are the person who changed my life. But there are certain apprehensions and fears in our mind. There is a trust deficit for God's sake. We have to obviate that impression. I am sitting in the church. I am fearful. What would the advocate say? What would the prosecutor say? If I am very soft, very polite, with an accused, the complainant party may think otherwise. If I am good with the complainant party, so we must go out of these impressions. I believe, I believe, and you must believe in God first. And then you should feel if you are clear headed whatever somebody says, whatever is the criticism, truth would always prevail. Mind you. But while dealing with such like cases of juvenile, of even adult accused, adult, whatever are the heinous crimes. So if our conscience is clear, we are satisfied, we are God fearing. We are performing our duties with due diligence, honesty, and fearfulness. I really salute that out of us. I was 29 year old young prosecutor while sitting in the office. He, he took a urine of the, from the procedure. That's why when he started his talk, talk he very clearly said, he said, these are my opinions, but because I experienced those this may not be the policy of the government. And the other very interesting feature, are you aware of what punishments have been provided under the USA laws of juvenile? They have got the most stringent laws, most severe punishments. Even the, although there are you know, community centers, correctional centers, observation homes for sending the children juvenile convict. So this is not the solution. The solution is that even my my emphasis and focus is even before coming to the court, because 
we live in a community. We have got our neighbors, we have got our relations besides our own children. We there have the rural background. For God's sake, we must be so having concern wherever we find. At least we should convey our message to the elders of the, that area. For God's sake, be a watchdog of activities of your children. Now we are undergoing the red transformation of internet, social media, Facebook. So please, we, we should also, we are talking here of Jamil Ali, it's good, very fruitful, very beneficial. Sujok has done a lot. Their, you know, their measures and stuff are absolutely praiseworthy. But at the same time, if we can't inform ourselves, if we, if we can't take care of our own children, we can't have a vigil on their activities, how can we save the Jolly Hell's fenders, either those are under life, and this is also needed. In, the, in, the, in this scenario, my, I, I, let, me, let me share another very interesting feature of a lady, Adriana. You can visit on YouTube and TED Talk. You can come to know This was, I was also came abreast of this sort of activities. Adriana Cannon. She is associate professor in California University, in Brain Institute of that university. Although she is a psychiatrist, but she is having some specialization in neuroscience, not as a neuro doctor. This is a little different. She carried on a study and research with the help of some other doctors. As you know, below 18 years of age boys, on a very scientific, you are also aware of MRI, I am not a doctor. I am through from medical to till today hours graduate. But what I have heard, functional imaging resonance, sorry, functional magnet resonance imaging, MRI, this is the you know, most modern technique of ultrasound. In the ultrasound you can't visibly view and about any ailment or problem or tumor. So a study was carried on on those kids. She did it very tirelessly. I read about her. Very, very learned lady, very educated, having speciality in different fields. She said, she reached at the conclusion that if a child is given reward of some dollar, let us say, some gift, some present, <coughs> and through that FMRI, there would be a fluid and grey material functioning because when we say function means brain, movement of brain as we can call them in you know, naked eye. What did she find? That material, you know, went upward. But if that child was perturbed, anxious, frustrated, was sexually abused, then it would be different in both of So she concluded there is a greater need of brain development. And the boys of that age, below 18, rather she said below 22, they are more responsive to such like rewards. And they can become the useful citizen if they are reformed in that on scientific basis. But this is also I would request to the, yeah, the ages of the, you know Sinjo, if they are exiting from this, putting from this project and going for a you know, child education, they must emphasize on hiring the services of psychiatrists of that level by taking guidance from that. That is not available on the internet. What she has done, some everything practically is available. So. In every sphere of life, for every segment of society, people living in slum areas, in a, you know, everybody is having different social conditions. Some their parents are so indifferent and unconcerned. If they are working, going to their offices, coming back at 4 or 5 p.m., 
They don't know where do their children, child go, with whom. Well, it was hard when we were kids 40 years back. That is known by the company which he keeps. This, you know, this is, this quotation is yet applicable everywhere. Rather, the life has become very fast. We are living in a global village. To disseminate knowledge, to share knowledge, to receive knowledge. I would say if somebody has the will, if a person like me who is going towards 50th, 50th year of his age can, you know, can read and write and hear and share, he's very young, up, upcoming. Judicial officer, my younger brother, my sister sitting around. So, wherever we are, in which capacity we have been performing our duties, either as a teacher, as a doctor, as a lawyer, but we must think over it. Okay, how can we serve not only the nation, but our own coming generations? They are our future. Tomorrow, they are holding the reins of the state. They are running the government. It will contest the election. They will become the bureaucrats. They will become the judges. But if they would deviate from this path, and would play in the hands of uh, terrorism phenomena is also indoctrination, insulin. They, if those are under trial prisoners, somebody has blown up, you know, there is no way of, mode of restoration. Blown up in you know, his life, but who have been arrested, they should be taken into task for reformation and the, those, those pupilers conditions in which they had to face this sort of situation. So, I think, again, I am, before summing up, I am thankful to Suhail Nasir Saab, he has really, because when I became judge in 2004, when I was prior to being, being a lawyer, I used to teach law in university, but when I became judge in 2004, and I was posted at Suroda and on my farewell in 2006 I was transferred from Suroda to Rehiya where Chawla Sahib was session there so here he was there, senior officer, bar, office bearers so what was my first sentence? I said I am really frightened because now I am the silent spectator <laughs> there was a time when I used to Deliver speeches, but thank God now Fraser has provided me opportunity and we are sharing. So, you people, anytime, there are not many things in life. Much can be done. You know, there is no end, no end, infinite. So, but I conclude that uh, the Sinjogs, they have done marvelous work and I am really thankful to and grateful to them for inviting me on this opinion and last but not least this way also. Thank you very much.